We've got a first here, Dawes, because Ben's actually going to get stuck into forwards for being stupid, aren't you, Ben? Particularly close a to the try bit, line. But it's not necessarily just their fault, yeah. but whether they're getting the information. What I was talking about before is Leicester, this, this period, when they got close to the line. But for me, a lot of teams, when they get five metres out, they're less of a threat than them when they're 20 out. They just become one-dimensional. The forwards come in and do a lot of pick and go. Scott, we were talking, you, you backs have a word for it. At pick and day. slow, mate. Pick and it. slow, it's slow. By this stage, it, for the defensive team, for me, it becomes quite easy. They're not going to do anything but go one-out runners and you just fly in, three men tackles, make your big hit, slow the ball down again and they never really get anywhere. And by the time it does get to any of the backs, it tends just to get shipped along the line because you think there might be an overlap and, and they take a lot of your space. So I was just going to look at maybe different ways of defending. Okay, but you've got a point a about few. how much pressure's on the scrum half, haven't well, you? It's very difficult. We've got our young scrum half who we've, uh, we've helped with his passing today. But when you're in here as a nine and you're this close to the line, as we saw it on the VT there, there's guys all over the place. These big guys, they're kicking you. There's feet everywhere. You feel like they're right on top of you. So you have to have a good wide base. And from that, it's very difficult to run. It's very difficult to break out the corner. And if you do, you know you're going to get smashed. So they feel like they're on top of you. So there's so much pressure here that it's difficult to get a very, very accurate wide pass. But there's also, I mean, there's pressure from the defensive line for, for any runners as well. Yeah. And, and I, But that's actually because they're so desperate because they know if they get a half tackle you can just reach over and score the try. I think teams should use it to their advantage. When I was playing, we hardly ever did any practice in this area. It was always 20 metres out. We'd start with our training sessions. So what we've seen there is teams picking and going around the corner and they're meeting three players that are just getting knocked back. It's slow ball and then they go again. So a lot of teams, we also see them come off with a one-off runner off the side. Maybe they've got people there to lift, but they're taking the ball standing still so that as the ball comes to the player, they all know who's going to get it. Three players in on them, they make the hit, they're off the line because they're desperate and we don't get any momentum. What I'd like to see is a bit back to the, the, the old days of these guys becoming a huge running threat. So they're going to actually set off before the scrum half picks up the ball and give them a target. One man slightly further in front so the ball can go across. Now any three of these guys can get the ball. And if we run at full tilt, look what happens to the defenders. It's a one-on-one -on -one collision, which is exactly what we want. A one-on-one -on -one collision, because if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you think you might get there. If you run into where all the meat of it is, you're worried that you might get hit. But Austin, what that means, if you then play with balance and don't use them every time, it creates opportunities Absolutely. elsewhere. Absolutely, but a great coach called Brian Ashton once told me that this is a wall. You come any side here, it's a brick wall, there's four defenders. So why run at a brick wall unless you're a bit stupid? So I sort of think, Scotty, and I'm sure you're the same, you will have come out from the wing on a few occasions, you will have seen them doing the pick and slow. What do you really want from these guys? How can they help you score a try? Well, firstly, running just like that and two. So if we do go out the back of them, they're already committing these guys. Quite often you see guys that know that the ball's going out the back, they don't quite run with the conviction that they ran there. Holding these guys out the back, and a nice crisp pass to the 10. And we're going to, you know, try and create, create numbers. Obviously, we're only calling it when it's on. There's no point calling it unless it's on. A lot often, you know, that's the main thing, is communi communicating, eyes up, identifying the numbers. Well, let's let's have a look at that very, very quickly to finish. So we're going to get the forwards who run through. You're going to hit Scotty. Again, these guys run gonna... through. Watch up at what happens to defenders as these footballs run through. They keep running. You wait till they go. They all get stopped. You get to the outside corner. And the fast, talented guys on the outside with brains <laughs> score a try. I think the, the teams that are doing this really well in this red zone, this five-metre channel, a lot of teams are doing it well further out. In the five-metre channel, it's the likes of the Northamptons that are actually yeah. causing defenders problems. They're having to make decisions, which means they're having to think, do I mark this guy, this guy? And you're getting more one-on-one -on -one tackles that are being missed. The likes of Luther Burrell scoring in, in, down the middle, forwards in tight or, or uh, the wings around the corner. So there you go, babes. When forwards think, they can achieve a lot. Give it a go.